Hey guys, it's JP, and in this video we will talk about what lumbopelvic hip control is and the importance of it, as well as some exercises I use to address this so you can improve the way you run. Again, due to the current situation with the coronavirus, the exercises I will be going over in this video require minimal equipment so they can easily be performed at home. Now, let's get into the video. The reason I am making a video on this is because when people think about improving stability in the trunk and lower body, people automatically assume that they should just be strengthening the abdominal muscles. However, doing so is only addressing one piece of the puzzle. What I like to say is that the core should involve more than just the abs. Multiple muscles are responsible for stability around the lower body, especially as you run. This is why it is important to include exercises that address lumbopelvic hip control. As the name implies, this involves muscles around the trunk, pelvis, and hip. To keep it simple, these muscles work together to improve stability and control in the area to optimize the way you move as you run. Therefore, we should be working on coordination and control of all the muscles in this area. Now that we covered that, let's go over some exercises I incorporate to improve lumbopelvic hip control that can easily be performed at home. The first exercise I will be going over is the single leg bridge with straight leg raises. This is actually a great exercise I use to both assess lumbopelvic hip control as well as work on it. This one was inspired by one of my colleagues, Chris Johnson. Anyway, to do this one, start in a bridge position like so. Then straighten out one leg and hold it for 5 to 10 seconds depending on your mastery of the activity. The moment the leg leaves the ground, this incorporates muscular demands from multiple angles. So not only are you working on the muscles in the posterior chain, but also around the entire hip and lower trunk, aka the lumbopelvic area. Anyway, as you perform this, try to keep the pelvis level and try not to let the hip sink. This ensures that you are working on those muscles. Then, you can put the leg down and repeat it on the other side. I typically start people with performing this one with 3-4 to four sets of 10 straight leg raises and build up from there. One other thing I will mention about this exercise is that a common compensation to this exercise is to lift the leg too high where the thighs are not level with each other. This actually decreases demands on the lumbopelvic hip area, therefore cheating the movement. The second exercise we will go over is the donkey toes. This variation really addresses and challenges the muscles around the lumbopelvic hip complex. This was inspired by another colleague, Jay Dashari. This incorporates a bit more of a dynamic component compared to the last exercise. To do this one, start on your hands and toes like so. Also, try to keep your arms stacked under the shoulder. This will reduce stress on the area. Now, as you perform this exercise, try to keep the back flat. As I've mentioned before, a good cue to follow is to pretend like you are bouncing plates on your back. Then, try to lift the leg by initiating the movement from the hips as shown. You can hold this for 2-3 to three seconds, then begin to alternate between each side. When starting to perform this one, you can start by performing it with 3-4 to four sets of 10 leg raises and eventually build up to performing 20 of them per set. The next exercise we will go over is the bird dog. This is a popular exercise that now incorporates dynamic demands from both the arms and legs. I have gone over this one before in a previous video on progressions of the bird dog, so I'll briefly go over it here. To do the bird dog, start in this position. Make sure to keep the arm stacked under the shoulder. Then, make sure to engage the core and try to keep the back flat throughout the activity. Again. You can also use the cue I mentioned earlier on pretending like you are bouncing plates on your back. Then, while maintaining this trunk position, try to straighten out the opposite arm and leg. Then you can repeat on the other side. Anyway, when people typically first perform this one, I start having them perform 3-4 to four sets of 10 repetitions on each side. The last exercise I will go over in this video is the Farmer's March. This is an underrated way to challenge the lumbopelvic hip complex in a standing position. This is a great way to work on coordination and control of the area. Also, it is really simple to perform. Basically, you will be performing forward marches with weights. You can easily replace the weights with other objects that can be carried like backpacks that are filled up or putting items in a grocery bag. Now, 
As you do the exercise, try not to lean excessively toward one side, so a good cue I use to do this is to try to keep the shoulders and hips level. By trying to maintain this during the activity, this will ensure that you are working on lumbopelvic hip control. Another thing to point out is as you go into this position, make sure to get tall with your knees extended and your trunk upright. Then, as the foot lands, try to keep it as gentle and quiet as possible. This will further challenge coordination and control of the area. Now, for this exercise, I typically start with people performing this one for three sets of 30 second durations and eventually build up to performing these for one minute. And those are a few exercises I use to improve lumbopelvic hip control. I hope you guys found this video useful in improving your own running. Also, I hope you guys continue to be safe and healthy at this current time. And as always, thank you for watching.